Scarlet Hollow episode 1 to you while playing it. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to be turning off my webcam just to help with the immersion and clear the screen so you can truly appreciate it. But yeah, let's get started. My name is Lisa, we live in the city of Rotterdam and we are female. Let us select two traits. We've got powerful, mystical, street smart, hot, book smart, and keen eye. Let's see. I think keen eye describes me well. Observant, picks up on vibes, understands others' perspectives. And then strong and athletic, probably not. Strange and unusual, maybe. You see the threads of reality in a way others cannot. I'm not sure I relate to that. Smells BS, also good at BS. No door can hold you. I'm not too sure about that either. You know a lot of fun facts. Research is your favorite activity. Straight A student. I feel like I do know a lot of fun facts. And I often say that to people and tell them fun facts. So I think we're going to go with book smart. Is our second trait. I'm gonna confirm. You jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off, and now here you are, awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to, re to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and seedy depots that felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of her mother, your aunt seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. Stranger. So anyway, as I was saying... Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours, talking at you without pause. You're not even sure he stopped when he started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland, looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. And me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff, you know, pushing joggers into the harbour, that sort of thing. Wait, what? Dude, what's wrong with you? Hell yeah, sounds awesome. Let's go with, wait, what? Pushing joggers into the harbor? Yeah, you know, teen stuff. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was going to call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she really was mad though, and not just playing. But she kept swinging and she was getting closer and closer to the edge, so soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh. But we fished her out, and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that, and we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like, for real, and jeez. You ever just get so mad you just, like, want to kill somebody? Smile and pretend he didn't just say that. I never feel that way, no. Oh yeah, all the time. Mm. I mean, I think I can relate to that feeling, but not necessarily in this context, in the way that this guy is speaking. So I think we're going to smile and pretend he didn't just say that. You smile and pretend he didn't just say that. I knew you'd get me. 
We understand each other. Somebody is trying to break your heart. That changes a person, makes them want to do things they never thought they'd want to do. I honestly could have killed that woman. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff. So I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Kenai, do you love her enough to make this work? Booksmart, diagnose him with a personality disorder. What's wrong with you? Haha, ha, that's interesting. Smart move, get out while you still can. Remain silent. I'm not sure we're in the mood to engage with this conversation, so perhaps we should remain silent. But I think I want to use the traits that we've got and see what happens. So let's use keen eye. Do you love her enough to make this work? You were so worked up by the thought of losing her that you wanted to kill her, but now that she's giving birth to a child you created together, you're planning on running off? Even if you love her, Think about whether that love is strong enough that you'd be able to handle raising a kid together. Think about how your actions are going to impact his life and whether removing yourself would be better for him in the long run. Huh, yeah, good stuff to think about. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't. Scarlet Hollow, just a small town, you probably never heard of it. Don't answer. I'm sure we can tell him. Scarlet Hollow. Oh, the hollow, huh? That's what they call the hollows up in the mountains, you know. I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There's a coal mine up in the hollow, you see? And there's always a job listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks. But my buddies get desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook, see how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk. To... Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Nice. I love boiled peanuts. Take the peanuts. No thanks. Screw you and screw your peanuts. Eat the peanuts. Uh, I want to go with the no thanks. Boiled peanuts do not sound appetizing. No thanks. You put your hand up to say no. I'm not really hungry. There's still a good 45 minutes left in your journey, pal. Assuming nothing goes wrong, best to have them on hand. The young man sets the peanuts down on the empty seat next to him. The juices dribble out the bottom of the bag and onto the upholstery, instantly soaking it in peanut brine. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. And just like that, you're alone. Though the stranger's peanuts remain on his seat, now that he's gone, you don't see any need to take his soggy leftovers. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next stop, Scarlet Hollow, end of the line. Almost there. The bus finally comes to a stop. Its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. Well, the sign reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as the bus pulls away, eager to leave you and this place behind. Hey Lisa. You instantly recognize the worn, young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha, and she looks annoyed to be here. It looks like someone needs a hug. Hey, Tabitha. Give her your condolences. Let's give her our condolences. I'm so sorry for your loss, Tabitha. Yes, great. Thank you. 
Let's get back to the estate. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Tip. Dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advancing the story. They can impact relationships and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Explore. How are you holding up? Explore. I guess we're both members of the Dead Mom Club now, huh? Explore. So, the funeral. Explore. Have we ever actually met? We can remain silent. I think we're going to ask her how she's holding up. How are you holding up? Fine. Keen eye. Are you sure? You seem tense. Book smart. Bottling your grief isn't a healthy coping strategy. You know you can talk to me. I lost my mom too. Okay, but if that ever changes... Phew! Good to hear. Hmm. We could use our traits, but I think there's something more going on than her just seeming tense or having unhealthy coping strategies. So I think we're just going to tell her that, you know you can talk to me, right? I lost my mom too. You know you can talk to me, right? I know we only just met, but you know I went through something similar with my own mom. So if you ever need to vent or, I'm good. Tabitha stares straight ahead her expression tense and icy. Let's ask her if we've ever actually met. Have we ever actually met before? I'm pretty sure this is the first time, right? Yep, you have your mom to thank for that, or had, I guess. That was unnecessary. Is there bad blood between us? I wish I'd known about you. Haha. <laughs> yeah, dead mom's club. Let's say, I wish I had known about you. I don't know why my mom left or what kind of grudge she had against the side of the family. But I'm sorry. I wish I'd known about you. Whatever. What's done is done. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Let's try, let's ask about the funeral, I think. I don't really like the term dead mom's club. So, the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. Jeez, that's almost a whole week. Need any help planning? Open casket, embalming, reception, remain silent. Let's ask her if she needs any help planning. Do you need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, free for all to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine. Just needed the coffin and somebody dig to dig a hole. Tabitha stares straight ahead, her expression tense and icy. Alright, Dead Moms Club it is. I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club now, huh? Your cousin turns to stare at you, an icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she was someone else, but she isn't. She turns back to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. Remain silent. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. And here it is, the Scarlet Estate, the old family homestead. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to some someone used to dingy apartments in grey cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed away with an anger burning underneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare to what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. 
As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. As soon as you enter, you're hit with a blast of dusty air. Everything in this room has been here much longer than you've been alive. Each object is cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear the doors creak on their hinges and the aches and moans of ancient floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen, and the hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. Books mark complement the architecture. So, you live here? It's beautiful. Let's ask if she lives here. So, you live here? Yeah, and I'm letting you stay here for free, so mind your manners, or did your mother not teach you about those? Shall we take our tour? Follow me. You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socialising with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. Oh, and you can also access the garden through here. But it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Tip. Some explore options prevent you from taking others. Choose carefully. Someone cleans this place? This place is nasty. It's nice. It's perfect. Awesome, I love PB&J. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? What if I want ice cream? Alright, what's next? Let's say that it's nice. This is so nice. It's much bigger than what I'm used to in the city. Is that a kitchen island? It is. Thank you. Awesome, I love PB&J. How'd you know it was one of my favorites? That smile can't be real. I didn't, but good for you. Is there somewhere in town to buy food? I might want to eat something other than PB&J this week. Is there somewhere in town we can get groceries? Well, aren't you fancy? Yeah, there's a general store. There's also a diner. I usually order my food in bulk online though, so I wouldn't be going with you. Hey, sweet, thanks. Sweet, thanks. Cool, good talk. Um, let's not provoke her with an ice cream question. Let's just say, all right, what's next? All right, what's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Is that your cat? Pet the cat, leave the cat be. Is that your cat? What's its name? Fru-fru, do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. Leave the cat be. You decide to follow Tabitha's advice. Shall we move on? The bathroom awaits. You once again follow Tabitha through a long dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it'll get easier to navigate these spaces, but for the time being you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. It is a nasty, wretched bathroom. Piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room and mystery stains on paint the floor. Mm, let's not be rude. Let's just do our business and get on with it. You lift the toilet seat. Bugs skitter from the bowl. You're good, actually. Use the facilities. 
When you gotta go, you gotta go, guys. Use the facilities. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour. Follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. This is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you'd better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. I think... <clears throat> Let's ask, who used to sleep here? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here, and now you'll sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. Keen eye. What's with all the boxes? Old family stuff. Let's press her just a tad. What kind of family stuff? Unimportant family stuff? This is a nice room, thank you. Good, you should be honored to stay in an historic landmark such as this. Every piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique handed down through the family for generations. This is not an Ikea bedroom or whatever such nonsense you're used to in the city. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duty, so you'll have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Tip. Some dialogue options will open additional conversation paths. Some right away, others down the line. I know you hate my mom, but stop taking it out on me. Is there a library in the estate? Where are you going? What am I supposed to do while you're gone? Are you sure you can't take the day off? Are you sure you're okay? I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. I think let's ask her if she's okay. Hey, are you sure you're doing okay? You seem kind of upset. I'm fine. I just need to get back to work. Let's ask about a library. Is there in a library I could check out? I couldn't fit too many books in my bag, and I'm not sure what else I should do with my time. There is, but as I said earlier, most of this building is off limits, and the library is in the west wing, which is extra off limits. You're better off heading into town. I'm pretty sure there's a library there. Where are you going? To work. Somebody has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own a coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your mother forfeited any claim to it years ago. Hashtag girl boss. Maybe not. Let's take the explore option to ask if we can watch. Can I come watch? What? No, the mine is dangerous and running it is difficult. I can't babysit you and do my job. Good for you. That sounds pretty impressive and exciting. Good for you. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but I don't think of it as boring or exciting in the same way I don't think of cleaning a toilet or painting a wall as either of those things. It's a task. One of those things you mentioned is a task that needs more doing. <laughs> That's a healthy mindset. That's kind of sad. Remain silent. Hmm.
I think I'm gonna say that's kind of sad. I don't want to upset her, but I do still want to try and be genuine. Don't you ever think about things you could be doing with your life that might give you a better sense of purpose than running a coal mine? Some of us don't have that luxury of choice, Lisa. Some of us had to stick around to keep the family business from crumbling, to keep this town from crumbling. Some of us had to temper our expectations for how our lives were going to go. There's a simple satisfaction to getting a task done, and that's all I need. Do whatever it is you want to do while I'm gone. Just don't do anything dumb or dangerous. Not while I'm responsible for you. Do you think you could take me into town before you leave? No, it's just down the hill. You can walk there yourself. What am I supposed to do while you're gone? There's a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now. That doesn't include figuring out activities for you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter. Why don't you, I don't know, go walk around the town or something until you get tired. There are historic buildings to look at. I'm sure you'll have a great time. All right, I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and the sprawling, decrepit estate. Going straight to the Forbidden Wings sounds a little risky. Let's start off with settling into our room. Now that your cousin is gone, the aches and pains of your journey sink into your bones. You stumble back up the stairs to your room, suitcase in tow, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. Take a nap. You've earned it. Put your spare clothes in the dresser. Check the closet. Look out the window. Let's start with looking out the window. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and do some gardening and whip it into shape. You'd go out, pull the weeds, chop the trees, carve the topiaries, and do whatever you needed to do to return it to its former glory. And now, and once it was all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Yeah, you'd definitely do that. Just not right now. Let's put our clothes in the dresser. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Oh, pardon me. Close the door. Grab the opossum. Gently smack the opossum. Put clothes on top of the opossum. Let's say, oh, pardon me. I feel like... I would do that if caught off guard, expecting the possum to understand me. Oh, pardon me. You gently close the drawer, leaving the marsupial in peace. This drawer belongs to the possum and there's nothing you can do about it. You open the top drawer next. It's empty, as good a place as you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the set of the house, you wonder if you'd have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag but there's no going back now take a nap you've earned it you immediately collapse onto the bed you're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out or so you thought you cough as a small cloud of dust arises from the mattress these sheets might have been fresh but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization you try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but you're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. Examine the painting on the wall. This must have been an old relative of yours. Very old, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago. So that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the mood for conversation. 
Let's check the closet. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. Well, this is a horror game. And as as things do go in horror games, we're going to pick up the creepy, go the creepy doll. Of course, you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up and examine it more closely. Its tag reads, Property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. That's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. A PB&J sounds great about now. You haven't had anything to eat all day. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place. A PB&J sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of your day. You head to the kitchen. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, plates, and a knife. Let's approach Fru-Fru. The cast hisses as you draw near, but remains fastened in place. This is clearly Fru-Fru's spot on the counter. Back away. You back away from Fru-Fru, trying not to make any sudden movements. Search the fridge. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. But below it in separate handing are the words, Okie dokie. You open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Open all takeout. Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. This substance doesn't just smell bad. It smells ancient. For God's sake, put it back. For God's sake, throw it away. Eat it. For God's sake, throw it away. Your body reacts before you even register what you're doing, compelled by a deep, primal disgust. You open the trash can, expecting the worst, but find it mostly empty. It makes sense, you suppose, given that your cousin seems to mostly s subsist on boxes mac of cheese. You toss the styrofoam container into the trash and close the lid, freeing yourself from the knowledge that the sludge ever existed to begin with. Search the fridge. You open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you're yet to touch anything other than the handle. Take the jelly. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was each a, either post specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is a plate, a knife, bread, and some peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. Close the fridge. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Keen eye, look closer. You squint in the darkness of the pantry. Behind the molded bread, a single book lies, a forgotten thin layer of dust collected on its cover. You pick it up. You flip to a bookmarked page. Both calves brain and aspic are an unappetizing enough on their own and you can only imagine how vile the combination of those two would be. What kind of person would call this their favorite food? No wonder your mom ran far, far away from this place. You shut the book and put it back in its place. Take the bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread. Great. One step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is a plate, knife, and some peanut butter. Take the peanut butter. The king of nut butters, and only 3% of each jar is matched up cockroaches. The only thing you need now are a plate and a knife. Close the pantry. You close the pantry door as best you can and turn back to the rest of the kitchen. Search the cabinets. This cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. 
examine the mug. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock NC. So your aunt and co cousin actually traveled somewhere, even if it was only for a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Examine the shot glass. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perline. So this wasn't from her 50th. Pearl Anne. Her aunt's name was Pearl Anne. From the few stories you've heard from your mom, Pearl Anne wasn't the type to have kitschy friends who gave out themed shot glasses at their birthday parties. Keen eye. Maybe it belongs to Janie. You imagine she might need an alcoholic beverage to get through cleaning this place, especially with Tabitha's sour, sour face peering over her shoulder. Grab a plate and butter knife. You grab a plate and butter knife. This is the last ingredient in you needed to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Close the cabinet. You close the cabinet and look back to the rest of the kitchen. Let's check out the garden before making our sandwich. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. You don't think you want to go out there after all. Are you even up to date on your tetanus shots? Return to the kitchen. You close the door behind you and return to the kitchen. Make that PB&J. Despite the state of this horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations, you can feed yourself. All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. You're done here. Congratulations, you've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? <laughs>